Well, here we are, 2023, and I already feel like I'm behind. Actually, I live my life in a constant state of feeling behind, losing track of whatever I should be focused on, which is probably wherever I left my keys, making impulsive decisions that add more complexity than benefit, two of which I was smart enough evidently to record in videos last year, and fighting to stay focused on whatever's currently in front of me while completely forgetting about anything that's not currently in front of me. Which is why I didn't get this video done in time to publish on New Year's Eve, a video I had been planning since October of last year. But we're here now. And before I can start working on all the videos I have planned for 2023, I think it's important to go back and update you on the outcome of those two impulsive decisions last year, and let you know how they affected my ability to automate the boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs, my name is Jeff. 2022 was a busy year. Slacker Labs gained more than 8,000 subscribers, and I joined the Home Assistant Creators Network. We moved to a new home, and I started over with Home Assistant, kind of. And I made two pretty big changes to my Home Assistant setup, both in the name of science and my inability to control my impulsivity when it comes to shiny things. The first one involves my Zigbee devices, and if you don't remember the video or you missed it, let me remind you. But during that time, I've been tinkering with Home Assistant, and I decided to go with ZHA for my Zigbee integration instead of Zigbee to MQTT. Really, this one was questionable from the beginning. At the time of this change, I had been using Zigbee to MQTT almost as long as I had been using Home Assistant. I had even contributed to the project, but I made the move to ZHA for two reasons. First, I think a lot of people are going to be getting Home Assistant yellows, and the easy path to Zigbee with that device is going to be ZHA. So I wanted to take a real good look at how well it would work compared to Zigbee to MQTT. And the second reason is something called multi-pan. Multi-pan might be the biggest reason to stick with ZHA, especially if you have a Home Assistant Yellow or you're going to be using the new Home Assistant Sky Connect. Multi-pan is software developed by the Home Assistant team that enables your Zigbee radio to run both the Zigbee network and a thread network using the same radio. At this point, it is experimental, and as of the 2022.12 release of Home Assistant, it's been disabled due to a bug. But I think the promise of running both Thread and Zigbee from a single radio is a pretty big deal. The new SkyConnect USB dongle does work with Zigbee to MQTT, at least it provides basic connectivity and functionality. There's still a lot of work to be done to make it work as well as the current radio choices though. But I think ZHA is going to be required for the thread piece, even if you're running Zigbee to MQTT. And as of right now, I think all of that complexity of running both Zigbee to MQTT and ZHA just to have both thread and Zigbee seems like a lot of unnecessary work. So just in an effort to keep things simple, I think sticking with ZHA might be the better option. And as expected, ZHA works fine as a Zigbee integration. I feel like I get better battery information in ZHA than I did in Zigbee to MQTT. For whatever reason, a lot of my Zigbee devices in Zigbee to MQTT come across as using mains power even when they're battery powered. That of course is fixable in Zigbee to MQTT by tweaking the device converters, but I suspect a lot of people aren't going to want to go through all of that trouble. But with using ZHA, you do have the downside of not having your devices in MQTT, and of course your Zigbee network going down anytime you restart Home Assistant. But the reality is, you really can't go wrong with either one of those integrations. For now though, if you're getting started with Zigbee and you're using the Home Assistant Sky Connect, or you have a Home Assistant Yellow, I would just stick with ZHA for now, because the Zigbee to MQTT support for those radios isn't fully baked yet. Anyway, this was an impulsive decision that really didn't impact my ability to automate the boring stuff. But of course, it wasn't the only impulsive decision I made last year. And of course, we're only talking about the impulsive decisions I was dumb enough to record in a video. We'll just pretend that if I didn't record it in a video, those decisions didn't happen. Anyway, if you don't remember, I also threw down the gauntlet on the automations.yaml file. Like I said, that repair feature really makes the case for keeping your automations and scripts in their respective files. Anyway, I'm off to move all of my automations to my automation.yaml file so I can take advantage of these changes. This is one impulsive decision I thought was going to turn out really well. After all, I do have a problem getting distracted in the middle of tasks. And remembering that I forgot to fix an automation while in the middle of the grocery store when I should be remembering to grab the eggs is not uncommon. Also, there's a 99% chance in that moment I'm going to forget the eggs anyway. Of course, the problem is that all of my automations are normally in my packages directory, and editing them on my phone using the browser editor is painful. 
Not to mention typing YAML on the phone is a horrible experience. And if I don't take the time to fix it as soon as I remember, then I'm not going to remember it later, no matter how many times I add it to my reminders or my to-do list. That's just not how my brain works. So moving all of my automations to the automation.yaml file means that when I'm away from my desk, I could use the much improved automation editor to edit those automations. And when I'm at my desk, use my normal editor to edit the raw YAML for those automations, which is my preferred method for working with automations anyway. Plus, those new handy automation error notifications were easier to use. Just click the link and boom, you're at the automation you need to fix. So honestly, as soon as I made that previous video, I moved all of my automations to my automation.yaml file. And for most of my automations, it did improve things. But for some of my automations, it made things way worse. The problem here is I write some complex automations with a lot of Jinja and if else logic inside of just service calls. And of course, that logic is neatly formatted when I'm editing the raw YAML. But when I moved all of those automations over to the automation.yaml file, Home Assistant took automations from looking like this to looking like this. And for someone who prefers editing their automations in YAML, this defeats the whole purpose of YAML, which is to be more human readable. Plus, the lack of white space and the visual line breaks just hurts my brain. So while I didn't totally backtrack on the decision, I did start to move quite a few of my automations back to the packages directory. And it was all about how Home Assistant handles that white space and those visual line breaks when putting those automations in the automation.yaml file. And really, this was mainly just the automations that involve text-to-speech or a lot of Jinja. If you're going to be primarily using the Home Assistant UI to edit your automations, then leaving those in the automation.yaml file makes total sense even if you plan on using lots of Jinja inside of those automations. Because regardless of what it looks like in the raw YAML, it still remains readable inside the automation editor. If you're like me and you still prefer to edit your automations using the YAML, then the move to the automation.yaml file becomes less beneficial. And in that case, I would just store the automations wherever you feel more comfortable storing them. Anyway, that's it for this video. Just a short one to catch you up on the two big decisions I made in 2022 and how they impacted my ability to automate the boring stuff. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because we have videos on Z-Wave JS coming up as well as videos on getting started with presence detection, building a security system, a revamped version of Jarvis that should be easier to set up and modify, getting started with Home Assistant Yellow, and of course, a lot more. And we're going to be taking a look at these thread-based roller shades from SmartWings which are HomeKit compatible and can be integrated with Home Assistant. And of course, thanks for sticking with me through 2022. And I look forward to having you on this journey in 2023. And with that, all that's left for us to do is go automate the boring stuff. If you're going to use the built-in automation editor inside of Home Assistant as your primary automation editor, how many times can I say automation editor?